Hello and welcome to the Third and Long Podcast, the only podcast for NFL punters. I'm your host, Grant Lee. Third and Long is brought to you by Little Birdie TV, Punting Form, topsport.com.au, and the home of stand-up comedy, The Comics Lounge. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome my friend, Nick Tedeschi, pro punter and the master behind his tips package to the house. Welcome, Top Rope. How are you, buddy? Uh, I'm glad to be back. It's uh, week 11. Where's this season snuck away to? But, uh, yeah, we're uh, we're up and about, and it uh, looks like a pretty good side of games this week. So for all our uh, listeners and our fans out there, I have amazing news. Jerry is back, live from downtown Miami, Florida. My compadre and our NFL tipping machine with his tips package shoebox Welcome, Mr. Jerry Jones. Yeah, the uh, airplane gods don't like me to make this show. They continually make it difficult for me, but uh, I powered through it and I'm here today, so ready to find some winners. So guys, first time in history, we have some breaking news on the show. Uh, Justin Fields is on the IR, apparently, with a uh, bad back. Uh, He's been carrying that team for uh, three or four weeks now, so I hope that doesn't stuff up any of the lines there, Jerry. Yeah, I mean, it's... uh he, he's finally getting into his own and, uh, you know, you just can't catch a break. I mean, the guy is, uh, he's unbelievable. He's got like a record for rushing yards for a QB over like a three week period or so. He's put the team on his back and I guess his back broke. So, uh, Josh Allen in the first half on script has been excellent left to his own devices, uh, in the, in the second half, um, he sort of doesn't look as great. His passer rating is below 80. Do we have any concerns with Josh Allen's struggles there, top right? Yeah, there's got to be some concerns. Like he had that break at you last year, but you know, this is we're kind of seeing a bit of the Josh Allen we saw, you know, a couple of years ago and, and kind of the early part of his career. Uh, look, obviously, he seems to be dealing with his arm injury. Uh, certainly not impacting his heart. He's throwing himself into tackles after interceptions, which he probably shouldn't shouldn't be doing. But uh, yeah, it was 25 to 1 at the start of the season to lead the NFL interceptions and it's shortened up significantly since then. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm a little concerned. As someone who's, who, who has a, who has back Buffalo uh, this year, uh, very concerned though. Obviously, it's the upside, but um, needs to turn around pretty quick. So the Washington Commanders stunned the Philadelphia Eagles and handed them their first loss of the season. And as a Cowboy fan, I can tell you I was quite ecstatic. Um, I don't feel different about the Eagles, um, but if the Eagles aren't winning the turnover battle and they're trailing in the second half, I think they can be beaten. Do we think the Eagles will fall back to the pack now, Jerry? Well, I mean, as a funny thing is, you know, I had Washington plus 11. I didn't expect them to win. Uh, You know, that's just the way we do it. We like the line, but, uh, you know, the Eagles, I'm not going to call them a fraud because they're solid on both sides of the ball. They just don't have that appeal that, like, let's say last year's Rams or the year before Bucks, you know, with the Brady and the, the loaded defense and the Evans and, you know, same thing with Cup and OBJ. Like, they just don't have that. They got Hurts to A.J. Brown. But um, you can see, like you said, if, if they're, they don't have the lead, they're not really a come-from-behind team. Washington played keep away. So there are other teams that can do that. Uh, maybe it's the blueprint to knock them off. But, again, it's all about home field advantage. And you would think at this point, being eight and one or nine and one, they'd have it all but locked up. But the Giants are seven and two. Uh, they're right there. The Cowboys six and three, right there. So it it's really important for them to get the home field and just have two home games. So without that, they're not going to do it. Just like almost any other team can. I don't see them winning three road games. So um, the blueprint is there. I'm not going to call them a fraud. I just don't think they're the favourite. So if interim head coach Jeff Saturday knocks off the Eagles this weekend, I don't think the Colts are out of the mix for a wild card spot. And if he can take them to the playoffs, could he be potentially coach of the year top right? No, he's zero chance of being <laughs> coach of the year. But um, he, uh, uh, he's certainly going to throw himself into the mix for the full-time role next year. So... Um, which would be quite quite stunning uh, in itself if if a guy who's only coaching experience was was coaching high school football in Georgia um, was enough to to get an NFL job. But having said that, yeah, and look, and to be honest, like Jim Irsay might be the only owner who would consider such a move as well. But um, it, it, you know, 
we often complain about coaches and how kind of follow the leader a lot of them are. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to seeing a coach out of the box, out of the box here. You know, like, is he good enough? We're, we're probably going to get a good insight over the, the back end of the year. But, uh, um, yeah, it was a pretty good start. He certainly got the boys fired up. And I'm like, I, I've got to say, like, going back to Matt Ryan was absolutely the way to go. Like, Matt Ryan might be done. He cannot be. Sam Mellinger clearly is not ready up to this level. So it was a smart move to go back to, to, to Matt Ryan there. If the Colts are looking to win there, if they're looking to tank club, it certainly appeared to be, well, then you probably stick with Sam Mellinger. But uh, Jeff said they certainly not buying into that. So the Cleveland Browns head to Buffalo this weekend and there could potentially be over two feet of snow. Should we all be jumping on the under of uh, minus 41 and a half, Jerry? No, because you are behind the times here, my man. That game was moved to the comfy Detroit Dome. No. There. So that game uh, probably within the last three or four hours was moved from Buffalo to Detroit. Uh, a little gambling note. I don't know how you guys do it on the other side of the pond, but most of the bets here are canceled uh, because of the change of venue and the new line has been posted. So, uh, wow. yeah, breaking news here on the Breaking Lopery news podcast. again. Huh? Thank you, Jerry. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, they're playing in Detroit. That's what happens when you're down under, mate. Things happen very, very slowly down You guys here, are ahead of us. You're supposed to be in the future, right? Isn't it clock <laughs> ahead of us over there? You guys are yeah. supposed to know these things. Well, I did have some uh, American friends ask me why I, I don't warn them of some of the tragedies that do happen over there. And <laughs> it's like I, it's I not, believe you too. It's not back to the future there, fellas. But <laughs> anyway, let's jump straight back into it. And, and uh, 50 years later, the 1972 Miami Dolphins remained the last team to go undefeated. Do you think in the modern era we will ever have a team that will go undefeated in a season, top right? Well, I wouldn't say never, but I want to say incredibly unlikely. And I'll, I'll, I'll have a guess and say these Miami Dolphins who go out and celebrate after uh, the last team, after the, the last uh, unbeaten team loses. I reckon they might all be dead by the time it happens <laughs> next. So, um, uh, yeah, this yeah, this is a league very much built on on parity. They've done a great job. You know, you look at the NBA, Major League Baseball, and you can pretty much put a line through twenty five teams before the season starts as to who's who's going to who's going to win, who's not. Yeah, the English Premier League, you can put a line through all by three or four of them. NFL. You know, you look at New York Jets are a great example. Everyone had written the Jets off. Yeah, you know, I don't think the Jets are going to win all, but but yeah, you know, they put themselves in the mix. They're absolutely yeah, you know, contend. It just lends itself to 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 teams on a week to week basis. We saw Washington beat Philadelphia last week. Yeah, it doesn't happen in a lot of sports. So um, I would say highly unlikely we're going to see an unbeaten team in Thompson. So the Green Bay Packers win a thriller in overtime at Lambeau against the Dallas Cowboys. It was a very sad day in my ha- in my house for sure, but uh, the Cowboys allowed 200 yards on the ground and through the air. Um, they also couldn't get Green Bay off the field. Green Bay was on the field for over 35 minutes. Do we think the Packers, are, Packers have now exposed the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry? I mean, I don't know if they exposed the Dallas Cowboys. Um the Packers are one of those teams <clears throat> that can do that with the combination of A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. And then Aaron Rodgers, as bad as he's been this year, he's still Aaron Rodgers. He can still beat you deep. You saw Christian Watson, good for that guy. He's been getting buried with injuries and drops all year, has three touchdowns. And, um, you know, not a lot of teams have two starting running backs, a one and a 1A and an Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. So I think you were okay with the Dallas Cowboys. I think you'll be fine. I don't think they were exposed. It's just it takes a special team. I mean, maybe someone like Cincinnati can do the same thing, you know, with a, with a Burrow and a Mixon and, and, and uh, you know, <clears throat> Jamar Chase on the outside. But it, it, it's all about matchups. And it was just it was a good matchup for Dallas. They, they ran at Parsons. You know what I mean? It's didn't let them come and take people down from behind or, rough, you know, rush the quarterback. It was very conservative smash mouth, old school football, which seems weird with an Aaron Rodgers. But then you see he can beat you over the top if you load that box. So it's just a bad matchup. Don't panic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I feel so much better. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, So Taylor Heineke is the flavor of the month at the moment. And after his sensational win against the Eagles, um, but he had a passer rating of under 66. Washington had 49 rushes. 
and they had the ball for over 40 minutes. Is the hype real on Heineke? Uh, he does what he needs to do. I thought it was a great game plan. Uh, I thought Ron Rivera did a great job in coaching up the, the team that came. Like Drew mentioned earlier, it was keep away. The, the, the Eagles just couldn't get the ball and they could just build no rhythm. So it was um, it was wonderful. And, and yeah, Brian Robinson is, is turning into an absolute beast. That touchdown score with you know, three or four guys hanging off him was, you know, even a bullet can't stop him. That's how that's how, uh, how how hard he runs. And Tony gives some great players. So I think Heineke's doing what he needs to do. And I think that's the difference between him having Carson Wentz there. Wentz, Wentz wants to be the star, wants to be the centerpiece, tries to, you know, maybe do too much. You know, Heineke's just happy playing his role. And, and he's done a great job at it. He really he he he, he can scramble when he needs to scramble. He can hit the passes when he needs to pass. So he's got good vision. He's telling the intermediate few passes. He was putting it over the top quite a bit. So um yeah, I, I think Heineke, I think when's his fit, Heineke needs to be the man. So Kansas City has the thirty first hardest schedule left. Do we think if the Chiefs go undefeated all the way to the playoffs that this will be their year? Top right? Uh, yeah, look, obviously the Chiefs are fantastic. I think, um, yeah, Mahomes is favourite for MVP now. He's he's going to be right in the um, right in the conversation for you know a, a, another MVP title, and and of course they're going to be close. But I, I, you know, I don't. This Chiefs team is not as good as Chiefs teams we've seen in the past. I think they're drastically overrated by the market, meaning mean they're nearly always a bit against team for mine. When it comes to the line, so uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I think they're too short, to, too short in the market, to be honest. So, Jerry, I have a crazy theory for you. So, I feel personally that the Raiders are tanking and that they're going to make a massive play for Tom Brady at the end of the season. A little birdie does tell me that LeBron James and Tom Brady could be the new owners of the NBA, uh, the NBA franchise that's going to be coming out of Vegas in the next couple of years. What do you think about this, Jerry? Okay, two parts to that. Uh, as far as being an owner, LeBron and Tom Brady can absolutely see it, especially in Las Vegas. Uh, I think Tom Brady's done. I mean, he's really holding it together right now. He's not going to go to that dysfunctional franchise and play quarterback behind that offensive line. I mean, David Carr gets smashed every single week, and uh, you know Tom Brady's pretty much out there in a wheelchair. Now, he does. He's very <laughs> smart. He knows where to throw the ball, and he gets rid of it. But he's not going to be. A, he's not going to move to another team. He's not going to play for that team. I can definitely see the ownership part. I will not see him playing quarterback there. Amazing boys, let's take a quick break, and we'll be back with to the house. And welcome back. And now it's time to take it to the house. Brought to you by Topsport.com.au, family owned and operated for thirty five years. Bet with a bookie you can trust. Bet with topsport.com.au and and now it's time to uh, have a look at the bookie wrap and uh, take uh, take us there, this jockey top rope. Yeah, we uh, it was a bad week to be uh, laying a minus last week and your five or fourteen favourites uh, made the nut there. The over under seven and seven uh, home teams are slow advantage nine and fourteen. Yeah, it's not been a good year for favourites. Those taking uh, those taking the, the short odds and your fifty nine percent. Winning that covering at forty two percent, so it's been a year for uh, dogs and plus punters. And the under fifty eight percent this year. And I don't know about you, Jerry, but I have pretty much every game slated as an under bet this this week. It's um, big unders week for me. Yeah, I mean, real quick on that unders, it, it's it's amazing when you put the stats up there. It just seems like I, I remember when the defenses were like with Pat Mahomes with the Tyreek team. They were like, uh, let's just play back, let them run the ball, let them beat us over the middle. Don't don't give up any big plays. It seems like everyone plays that defense against every team. You don't see big plays each week, and they just pound it, pound. They're always in third and short, and if they don't get the first down, then they got a punt. So, I, again, I'm, I just look at the numbers, and I just see the way that there's the lack of big plays. It seems like everyone plays defense like they're playing against the, you know, the, the 2020 Chiefs, and it's just – you got to drive the ball 75 yards and you can't have a holding penalty. And, and that's just the way it is. So I, I agree with you. Leaning under all the way, all the way across the board. I mean, to see these 39s in the NFL two years ago, that was unheard of. I mean, the Jets Patriots, 37 and a half. I mean, it's amazing. A couple of years ago, we were looking at lines in, yeah, 
four or five games a week in the 50s. Mm-hmm. Now, I think there's been yep. 15 games in the 50s this year. 15 or 16 yeah, games that, in the 50s That used to be year. 13 a week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it did. So and I, it's particularly true in the um, in division games where teams obviously know each other a lot better. The under is 32 and 10 this year in, in, in division in division matchups, which is, yeah, absolutely insane. People will go, well, it's going to regress to, to, to the main. And there probably will be some regression there, but I'd I think this has been a kind of fundamental shift. The way, like I said, the way they're playing defense at the moment, I, I, you know, I, I don't see the under going away soon, particularly with the weather getting worse as well. All the boys say that you have an amazing set of tips, Top Rope. Uh, would you <laughs> mind uh, getting them out for us, mate, and taking us to the house? I'll always get my tips out for you, Jerry <laughs> and uh, Grant. It's um, yeah, we went three for five last week, seven and a half units bet, small profit plus 1.85. We are 28.21 for the year, plus 18.96 units, plus 12.19%. Uh, it's we got three winners there. We had the, the, the commanders at the end of the week, uh, the, the Saints and uh, Pittsburgh went well and truly under there, which was nice, and the Atlanta Carolina game also went under. Probably a little bit stiff on the Houston line there, plus five and a half, big bet there, lost by eight, but uh, we're driving, had a touchdown call back, ended up settling for the field goal there. So um, a little uh, little upsetting there, but uh, that's, that's football for you. So, Jerry, show us your tips, mate. Take us to the shoebox. Yeah, I mean, again, same as him, three and two. Uh, I, I don't think I would have changed any of my bets. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not uh, having a, a rough year. You know, just around 500, a little bit of a small loser. I think some of these games that I uh, that we break down that are not part of my package are doing a lot better than the ones that are in the package. So we'll change that. I just got uh, my compadre over. I got a lot of work to do to catch up to him in six, seven weeks. They had the Texans the same as you. The Bills was really weird. Uh, so the Texans, I think we both deserve to win that game. I mean, they they were down deep. But like he said, and you know, interceptions, turnovers, settling for field goals. I, I really feel like I should have won that game, and I should feel like I should have won the Bills. So I wouldn't change anything. Let's go though, three and two for both of us. I'm looking for a five and zero oh sweep here. Boom, bounce back, boys, and that's what the the most amazing thing about the NFL is. You can uh, you can go five and zero oh just like that. So once again, we're lucky again here in Australia. We've got seven matches this uh, this week, and let's jump straight into game number one, boys. It's uh, it's Philadelphia at Indianapolis, uh, Monday, 5 a.m. ESPN. Uh, the line is Eagles minus six, and the total is 46. So, look, the Eagles are still a good team. They're still top five offense and defense. Uh, but Jeff Saturday, the mastermind, is 1-0 and with the Colts. And uh, what do you think about this one, Top Run? Yeah, I don't love this game from a betting point of view. Um, the line is probably about right. Uh, road favourites on short rest have a pretty good record, 45, 34, and 3 against the spread. Hertz has only covered 5 or 15 on the road. Um, but the Colts have covered just 1 or 5 off a win. Matt Ryan is 3 of his last 14 co- covers off a win and only covered 5 or 7 against winning teams. So lean towards the minus. Best bet in the game, maybe under, under 76, 59, non division. Home dogs are three and a half or more, and the Colts have gone under in 13 of 16 games, so they haven't got much offence. So uh, leaning towards the under. I'm telling you, Jeff, Saturday could be a Hollywood movie. Uh, I've, I've got this feeling, Jerry. I don't know about you, mate, but uh, this could be the next big movie in five years' time. But anyway, let's jump into match number two. Uh, LA Rams at New Orleans, Monday, 5 a.m. ESPN, uh, the line Saints minus three and a half, and the total is thirty nine. So, um, look, the Rams have lost three straight games, a stretch in which the, which they've averaged about fourteen points per game. Cooper Cup will now be out with an ankle injury, hopefully, unless Jerry's had some inside information. And uh, the Saints have averaged eleven points in their back to back losses. Where is the play on this one, Jerry? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Stafford missed last week. That game was disgusting when you had Stafford and Murray both miss. Uh, he should be back. Uh, like you said, Cooper Cup is out, but uh, maybe it'll give Stafford some time to spread it around instead of targeting him 20 times a game. I just think the Saints are really, really bad on offense. Uh, I don't know if they can take care of Aaron Donald. I think he'll wreck the game. Uh, I'm taking the three. I like the field goal here. 
I could see it going either way. I don't see either team winning by more than seven. So I'm just going to take the plus. It's not really a big wager of mine, but I, I would take the points in this game. And, uh, you know, you could look like one of these, like that San Francisco Denver earlier on in the year when it was like 11 and 10. One of those really ugly looking Ram either win or cover. Amazing. Thank you, Jerry. So let's jump straight into match number three, New York Jets at New England Monday, 5 a.m. on 7, mate. Uh, the line, Pats minus three and a half. The total is 39. So these teams met in week eight, I'm pretty sure. And uh, the Patriots won 22 to 17. Uh, look, the Jets are coming off a bye uh, after their, their big win against Buffalo. Zach Wilson, is he is he the guy? Who knows? But uh, can he beat Bill Belichick's defense? Who are we backing on this one, Top Run? Well, first of all, we'll, who we're backing is we're going to, my, we'll send my charity, but my best bet of the week is the under in this game. Um, under in division games, actually, early 32 12 and 1 this year in division games. The under is 60 and 33 in the last 10 years when the total is 40 or less. So, um, but you just don't go low enough when, when, in these games for mine. So, nine of the last 13 have gone under. The under is 5 and 1. The Jets are off a win, 4 and 1 when the Pats off a buy, so loading up on the under. You asked the question earlier really whether Zach Wilson can get the job done. Uh, I think he can. The only thing that gives me pause in this is Belichick's record against the Jets. He's got a great cover record against the Jets. I think he's the one 13 on the trot. Uh, the Pats covered six of eight off a big win, covered six of eight off a buy. But uh, underdogs in low total games, 104, 70 and four against the number. The uh, Jets have covered four straight against a winning team, covered five of six overall. So uh, I'd rather be with the plus here, but not a lot of confidence, but very confident in the end. So let's head into match number four, Cincinnati at Pittsburgh, Monday, 8.25 a.m. on 7 mate. Uh, the line is Bengals minus four. The total is 41 points. So the Bengals are number one scoring team since week six. Burroughs is one of three quarterbacks with a completion rate of 70%. Uh, the Steelers beat the Bengals 23-20 to 20, uh, the last time they played. And uh, can Cincinnati steal this one, Jerry? I mean, they can. Uh, but if you're asking me, I'm going to look at the total here. Uh, I am not very confident in betting the Bengals without Jamar Chase. I know Burrow is a good quarterback, but Chase is a difference maker. And he makes Burrow who he is. I don't care what anyone wants to tell me. And they they matched up once in week one. Like you said, Pittsburgh got the win. They were totally dominated, but they got the win due to some fluky turnovers. I think TJ Watt got hurt in that game as well. Pittsburgh got enough on defense <clears throat> to hold Cincinnati down. Kenny Pickett, Trubisky, whoever's doing the show on that side, the same kind of player. You know, they can they can move, make some plays with their legs. That means pick up some third downs, keep the clock running. I think Cincy might try to pound Joe Mixon as well. This thing just points to an under. It's a coin flip on who's going to win the game. I see it opened at six. It's down to four. It'll tell you some early wise guy money was on Pittsburgh, but I'm not about to put my money there. I'll go under the 41. So match number five, match of the week in my mind and in my house, Dallas at Minnesota. Monday, 8.25 a.m. ESPN. Uh, the line is Cowboys minus one. The total is 47. So the, the Cowboys are favoured against Minnesota. The Cowboys are great at getting to the quarterback, especially with Parsons. Dak has been awful on third and fourth down throws. The Vikings are now winning these close games and the turnover battle. Kirk Cousins is two and eight lifetime against Dallas. Where should the punters put their money on this one, Top Run? I don't love this as a betting game. Um, I'll, I'll be betting small Minnesota in this one. Uh, home underdogs with a you know, record of 88 percent or better uh, this late in the season: 37, 22, and two against the spread. Uh, very rarely you, you, you got that. The last one was 2015. Uh, we've had that. The biggest thing most pause is Dak does not have a great record against winning teams, 14 and 23 against the spread. The Vikings, yeah, to the eye, they're certainly overachieving. They can't keep winning all these close games. That's going to regress. So there's a little bit of pause in, in this one. But um, I love the acquisition of TJ Hawkinson. I think, you know, they've needed a tight end to kind of 
fit in with what they with, with how they like to play. Yeah, and for all the knocks Kirk Cousins takes, and he you know deserving of a lot of them, he can hit some big throws when he needs to. And yeah, he, those drives at the back end of last week uh, are standing in Justin Jefferson. Well, that that catch was one of the greatest catches you will ever see. So, um, yeah, give me the Vikings, but in a lot of conference. Yeah, no, it was an amazing catch. I reckon I've watched the replay a hundred times. Incredible. I don't know how they do it. I don't know what's on the glove, but it's incredible. So uh, let's jump straight into the next match. It's match number six, Kansas City at LA Chargers, Monday, 12.20 p.m. ESPN. Uh, the Chiefs minus five, and the total is 51 and a half. So... Look, the Chiefs have scored 40-plus points in three of their last four road games. Patrick Mahomes has thrown a touchdown to 10 different receivers, if you can believe it, Jerry. Um, you know, I I can't see anyone getting close to the, the, the Chiefs this year. Where's the play on this one, Jerry? Again, um, you know, <clears throat> I lean the Chiefs. I know the top rope would uh, probably kill me if I had a – divisional road team laying five points, but so I'm not going to do it. Uh, I like over 51 and a half. If you watch that game against the uh, 49ers, the Chargers, every time you looked up, one of their defenders was being walked off the field with an injury. Their defensive line is banged up. They were sucking wind. 49ers were lucky to win that game, but you can see they did, the, the Chargers just wilted at the end. Also, there's whispers that both Mike Williams and Keenan Allen will be back. So if we can add both those receivers combined with a banged up defensive line and a defense in general, look for some fireworks. I'm going to lean away from, I lean the Chiefs, but I'm not going to bet it. My money will be on over 51 and a half. So uh, time to queue up the Monday night football theme there, Borco. And uh, we've got an international theme. This one's going to be in Mexico. It's San Francisco at Arizona slash Mexico Tuesday at 12.20 p.m. on ESPN. The line, 49ers, mine, minus eight. Uh, the total is 44. So another international game here in Mexico. Look, the Niners, uh, number one in total defense. They have not given up a point in the second half for over two weeks now. Arizona are not good. And uh, the word is that Kyler Murray will probably miss another week. Where's the love on this one, Top Run? I'm glad Kyle Murray's missing a little bit. Colt McCoy did the job last week. I'm happy to uh, uh, be able to cover a big number again. Uh, love this as a betting game. Uh, I'll be loading up on the under, loading up on the big plus here. Uh, I think the Nines are pretty limited with their uh, scoring. Uh, their game plan is very much run focused here. So, um, got to be with uh, the uh, cards here. They've also covered eight of the last nine against the 49ers. The dogs covered seven of eight in this matchup. Best bet, though, to the surprise of nobody, the under, the under division games, bang. The under is five and one in the head to head between these two. The under is 115, 79 and three at night. The under is in 13 and 17 Niners games. Also, Colt McCoy is going to be quarterback, so that limits the uh, upside for the Cardinals will be all over the end this one. So thank you, guys. Once again, amazing insight from uh, Jerry and Top Rope. These boys know what they're talking about. If you haven't already done it, head to the littlebirdie.live, head to the Little Birdie shop. You'll find the boys' picks in there. You've got Jerry's to the house. You've got, I'm um, sorry, you've got Top Rope's to the house. You've got Jerry's shoebox. It's available for $22 a week. These guys will help you. Show off to your mates. If you're a serious punter and you want to make some money on this great game, it's the way to go. So head to the house and uh, pick it up. And while we're talking about uh, great picks uh, there, uh, Top Rope, mate, how is the Super Bowl market uh, coming up? Yeah, we're seeing the bills starting to drift, drift back out there. It's uh, $5.20, the Chiefs, five fifty. Eagles have been pretty firm at seven fifty. The Niners have dipped under double figures into nine seventy five. and the Vikings have probably been the big movers after that, their impressive win uh, last week. Twelve, dollars. Uh, $12, Baltimore thirteen, Dallas fourteen, Miami eighteen. You know, Miami might be the, you know, that first page of the ones perhaps looking the value there. Two has been unbelievable this year, and, and you know, Jerry talked about earlier that, that we're not seeing a lot of the big plays. And most teams aren't being able to pull it off, but the, you know, the Dolphins are, are probably the exception to that rule. They're, they're certainly getting deep. And with, with that two-headed monster, Tyreek and uh, 
and, and Jalen Waddle, uh, they're certainly getting there. So, um, you know, eight and is not the worst price. They're going to have to come past, come through the, I guess, the, the hard side of the draw. The AFC certainly looks significantly better than the AFC. But, uh, you know, Miami on the night, I think, have the upside to beating them. And the Bengals are still creeping. I wouldn't, uh, they're, they're great odds at the moment looking at that list there. So, now it's time for one of my favourite parts of the week. These are the charity picks, and uh, each week the, our panel are granted $100 to invest by our sponsors at topsport.com.au. Um, I've got to tell you, boys, I, I, I went backwards and lost. Uh, it was a shock weekend. How did you go uh, there, Nick? I did very poorly. Uh, Texans plus five and a half. Uh, still cursing it. Like Jerry and I both mentioned should have, should have covered, but... Um, they pay on should have covered the same as they pay on a loss, which is nothing. So um, big L for me. And Jerry, back on the winner's board there, my friend. Yeah, I mean, uh, Tampa Bay, I, I I watched Brady come back to life and beat the Rams in the last second. And I said, you know what, let's let's see if he can do it again over in Germany and, and really put a good game together. And they were playing, in, you know, an upstart Seattle team inferior i really that was one of my best games of the week so for all the fans playing at home uh the leaderboard i'm up by one game and uh jerry and top rope are just behind me so this week is vital so who have you got this week top rope i've got the under in the uh jets patriots game oh since and sensational jerry uh i'm going with the carolina panthers um i i think make sure that uh carolina has baker mayfield and if he starts which I think he will. Um, I, I really, that's way too many points for, you know, they got a great defense, a lot of young kids. Um, they're going to play close to the vest. It should be a close game. I, I don't see them beating the Ravens, but th- there's too many points in the NFL, 13 and a half. Yeah, that's amazing. So I've gone back to the well, ladies and gentlemen. I've gone back to Texans. Um, I think they will cause the upset this week. So, boys, wish you all the best. So our ankle breakers competition, once again, um, we had our winner for this week, Dave Norster. He basically chose the 49ers to win, um, and he he said by three points. So congratulations there, mate. And um, if you haven't joined the competition before, this is amazing, guys. If you jump on board, you can win some signed memorabilia uh, and How to enter. Our match this week is the uh, Kansas City Chiefs at the LA Chargers. How you must enter. Now, pick the margin. So, for example, if I think Kansas City is going to win by three points, you put that on your socials and our socials. So, uh, for us, it's Little Birdie TV and Third and Long TV. So, to qualify, you must tag one friend, just tag five. Um, And we like that down here and, and just... Get that going, guys. So jump on board, enter the competition because we've got some amazing things coming up. So ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again. We will say goodbye to Jerry and Top Rope. Uh, It's been amazing, boys. Thank you for all your insight. Good luck this week punting. Uh, That's a wrap for our 11th show of the year. And remember, guys, hit the little birdie shop, uh, pick up the boys' tips packages, follow us on YouTube. Uh, You can listen to us on Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts, and, and be sure to follow us on Instagram, uh, Little Birdie TV, Third and Long TV, and remember, guys, for all your punting action, head to topsport.com.au, invest wisely, punters, enjoy week 11, love you, good night.